All right. So how are you today? Well, a little bit better. I find that most of my problems come because I've made myself too busy. Uh, it's today is it's uh, it's better. I it was beautiful weather or it still is beautiful weather. So I went out and I had a nice walk, which was nice. And I had a really good client today, which is also nice. Then I needed to handle some shitty things, less nice, but overall really well. And you? <laughs> yeah, I um on Saturday I basically went. To Death spiraled down the rabbit hole. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. We know that this full moon energy is all about clearing and getting rid of stuff we don't need. Yes. And um, I had had a uncomfortable conversation with my oldest sister, and um, she doesn't appreciate my choices, my freedom of choice. And she ended up hanging up on me and we were all supposed to go to mom's for Christmas. So I ended up having to back out of going to mom's for Christmas. And I was not overly happy about that. And so then I decided to go on the wisdom app and do, uh, you know, to make myself feel better. I said, well, let's talk about, you know, the things we remember about Christmas that make us really happy. Hmm. So I did. I started off really good talking about all of my memories as a kid and all of the things that we did at Christmas time. And then the next thing I know, I'm talking about all of the awful things that happened to me at Christmas. And I just spiraled all the way down. And I'm, I couldn't stop myself. It's like I had, I, I could not stop talking. Yes, you were and, a rent type of thing. I, yeah. And so and so I, I um, tried to, you know, go back on a little high note, reminding people you don't have to be alone during the holidays. There's Clubhouse, there's Wisdom App, there's Facebook, there's groups all over the place. I, I think there's even Meetup where you can meet up with groups and, and be on a Zoom with people so you don't have to be alone at Christmas. And of course, with the Wisdom App, it automatically just saves the recording. I had to go in later and delete it. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we can get the wisdom app here because I still have not yeah. been able to find it. Yeah. But so that side. But so anyways, yesterday morning in my meditation, I got up and I could this sadness on my heart was just huge. It was so sad. So I called in my spiritual team and and we worked on all of that and, and removing all of that energy from my heart energy. And, and instead of going on, on a wisdom app, I would have journaled all of it, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, journaled all of that. But I guess I really needed to let it out. And then I'd allowed my um, angels and spirit guides to be able to remove that, were, that are no longer serving stuff. I've kept in my heart needed to let go of so it was really a powerful healing and and I think meditation is so powerful when you learn to connect to your spirit guides and the angels and ask for help and get them to you know help you remove things especially when we don't always need to reach out to our healers if it's something we can do ourselves but then sometimes we run into that really we just can't get through it on our own and then i'll call my healer kate and book an appointment and we'll do this together but i think it's so powerful when we use our meditation and connect to our guides and the angels to help us definitely i was feeling saturday oh no it was sunday i think it was yesterday even yesterday was the full moon right yeah your 18th Saturday is the full moon. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Today's Monday. Yeah. I, um, I thought I'd go for a moon walk and just do moon bathing and, and douse myself in its energy. And, you know, because I, I hadn't been able to get myself out of the house because I was feeling so in, tired. And that's the problem with the winter. I like walking in nature, but you can only do that in daylight. And it's already dark by 4 p.m. here. And I had so many things to do with cleaning in the house and getting groceries and, and you know, those types of things that by the time I got home, I was very, very tired. And if I wanted to go walking in nature before it get dark, I needed to leave immediately. And that was just too much. So I decided, okay, I'm, I'm not going today. And then I thought, oh, but it's the full moon. 
I can do a moonwalk. Then I go to the river because that's open, no woods. We have lots of light and, and it's beautiful. I've done it before. I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. And I needed a couple more things from the grocery store and I thought oh you are passing that on your way and then you can also treat yourself to something nice for along the walk and I thought yeah plan you know so I was feeling happy about myself and um, I, I got dressed warm enough to handle the temperatures and being outside and, and I took my backpack and set off and then when I came outside it was raining oh. Well, my app had told me no rain this evening. So the app was <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but I thought, you know, who cares? Just it's it's softly raining. And, um, you know, you're not made of sugar. Just go do your thing. So I went to the grocery store. I bought the things I needed. And I bought something uh, nice for myself. And then I went out and I was like, but it's cloudy. You cannot even see the moon. I thought, yeah, but you wanted to go for a moonwalk. Yeah, yeah. So I had this internal conflict with myself. On the one hand, I wanted to go for a moonwalk. And on the other hand, I thought, I'm tired. It's cold. It's raining. It's cloudy. Why not just go home? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, but, but you know, you motivated yourself. I have this internal dialogue that goes like this. You motivated yourself. You're here. You're outside. It's not raining that hard. Every now and then the moon peeks through the clouds. So, you know, and I thought, yes. But, and then I thought, well, make a, at least walk a little bit further. See if you can find a spot that's nice where the moon comes out. And I thought, okay, so I, I convinced myself to walk a little bit further. And then I saw the moon come through the clouds and I see, see, you know, it's there for you. It really is there. I thought, yeah, but you know, going to the river, it's a very long walk. It's about two and a half hours, three hours going back and forth. And, and I just, I, I couldn't motivate myself to do that. And I thought, okay, well, what would be a good compromise? So I thought you can go to the park. And if you stay in the open areas, not in the wooded areas, then you'll still have enough light. And I thought, yes plan so i ate half of the box of cookies <laughs> <laughs> because i needed some loving some <laughs> and i set off to the park and i had brought thermos flas flasks with with hot tea for myself so i went to the park and i found this quiet bench that was overlooking a pond with water and the moon was coming from this side if it came because it was mostly behind the clouds mm -hmm. and i just sat there for a while and i thought you know let's think about all the things that you're grateful for just list all the things that you're grateful for. And I started listing all the things that I was grateful for. And then also inspiration hit me and I thought of something that I would really like to manifest and about a couple of other things that I wanted to let go. And there were people coming by that were out there with the dog that needed to be in the rain because they have a dog and they were looking like me like, you're crazy. <laughs> Who wants to sit outside in the rain, in, in the dark, on a bench? <laughs> and I thought, I don't care. And, and eventually I felt, okay, now it's time to go home. And I think I sat there for, well, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something, quite long. And I felt good about myself. I thought, you know, you went out, you were in nature, you did your groceries, you listened to what you were grateful for, you got refocused on what you really want to manifest in your life, and you had a decent walk. Now mm -hmm. you can go home. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hear you. I'm so, like, you are a lot braver than me. I have been, I finally got up what was it yesterday morning at six o'clock and went for a walk I have not gone for a walk for two weeks and I am not a winter person I don't like the cold mm -hmm. and you know so it was cold here and wintry and I am like you have got to get over this so it was minus 10 celsius um, my face was pretty pink when I got home but I was actually you know um I didn't go that far, but they have the trees decorated in our little center here in our tiny little town. So I took some pictures in front of the trees and they, you know, my face was nice and pink. So <laughs> I 
Okay. But yeah, sometimes we really just have to make a commitment to get out and do things and then follow through on that commitment. Um, this morning, I was going to do the same thing. I had my alarm set for six o'clock, except when I set the alarm, I forgot to hit the done button. So it didn't save them. <laughs> I woke up at seven o'clock and it's like, oh, I guess I better get mobile. <laughs> yes. And then I get you, you know, I, I, I'm not a winter person like you. And in the summer, you know, when the sun is shining, I go out by myself. It's, it's just, I don't even have to think about it. I look outside and think, yes, that's where I want to be. And I go. And now when I wake up, I'm looking outside and it's dark or it's raining or snowing and I do like snow actually, because I like how beautiful snow mm -hmm. makes everything outside. That layer across everything, it's just like a little blanket of beauty. So yeah. I do like to look at snow and when I dress appropriately, meaning multiple layers and things <laughs> that keep me warm and that protect my face and my head and everything, then I can actually enjoy being out in the snow for a couple of hours even if the night if the weather is nice if the sun is shining and there's snow outside i can be outside for a long time but right now we're not having snow we're only having rain and when you look outside it's gray it's cloudy it's dreary it's ugh, it's hideous it's cold it's it's very <laughs> unappetizing and then I think yeah but you know you promised yourself to go walk in nature every day and during the week I have to say I'm proud of myself all the weekdays I've gone out and I walked for one and a half to two hours even if it was raining or not but this weekend I just I didn't feel it I didn't like to go out and then you know, I don't know how it works with you, but with me, then I'm, I'm very aware of the clock. And then I think, okay, one o'clock, oh, you still have time, two o'clock, oh, you still have time, three o'clock. Well, it gets dark at four. So if you're not going to get a move on right now, you better just not go because then it will be dark and you cannot go anyway. And then I thought, just make a choice and just decide am i going or am i not going because it's postponing and it's pushing and it's, it's not helping it's, it's not making anything better so i decided okay i'm just i'm not going <laughs> yeah it's that's the whole thing um you know i've learned to just make a decision but it's been so funny because I will talk to my body and my body hasn't wanted to go out and my left ankle was really bothering me and it was like yep yeah, no I when you know it's because the way I drive the school bus I have to use my left leg to put the brake on so that the you know the stop sign will come out for the kids and the right ones you know the gas pedal so my left leg gets really sore because it's putting that brake on and off on and off on and off for all those stops and my body was like, yeah, no, you know, we're not mm -hmm. going. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But um, yeah, sometimes you just like Sunday I, or yeah, I guess it was not Sunday. Yeah. I just got up and w the body felt good. I felt good. We went for that short little walk, but yeah, it's, it's about not like not doing what you did, not beating yourself up. It's, it's like, I don't feel like it. I'm not going to go and give yourself permission not to go. Yes, exactly. You know, and, and it's that's that's one of the most important things I have had to learn because you know you're I, I am always teaching about morning routines and uh, sticking to your routines. And there is a very fine line between it being good for you and you doing it out of obligation. And right. that's the thing that I learned, you know, it's, it's really good to have things in your morning routine and it's also good to stick to it, but not because you have to stick to it, even if it's not feeling okay. So it's better to tune into your body. And I know, and that's what I told myself, you know, that if you are feeling good and your body is feeling good, that it doesn't matter if it's raining outside or that it's cloudy. If you want to go, you go. So the fact that you are now dragging your heels and and you know that tells you that your body is not in a position that it actually wants to go so just accept it get over yourself and do other stuff that you love doing and that's what I did I took my crocheting and I I'm, I'm halfway through my sweater now so oh, nice. <laughs> 
and 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 that's it and 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 i have a lot of things that could be in my morning routine but i'm not forcing myself to do everything every day there are a couple of things like grounding myself doing my energy rituals so to make sure that the energy keeps flowing through me that i'm like a conduit those are very important those are things that i do every day but journaling uh, people tell you you need to journal every day and then it becomes like an obligation and then it's like something that's strangling me and I don't like to do it anymore and then I stop but it is good to do it so now I've just accepted that whenever I feel I need to journal I take it and I journal and sometimes that's multiple times a week and sometimes that's once every two weeks and that's just okay and the same is with the walk you know if i'm feeling good i know i will go out i will reap the benefits and whenever i'm not feeling good then that will translate in me not wanting to do something so do not force yourself but listen to yourself the infinite wisdom that is your body and your soul and and do the things that you're feeling called to every day and and that can vary depending yeah. on the day yeah, because we all have different personalities and we have different parts of ourselves. And I when I am one of these people who, when I'm learning something new, I will do a deep dive. So when I first started doing meditation and bringing in the dragons in my meditation and doing chakra meditations with specific dragons, I did that for a very long time. <clears throat> and then I was introduced to essential oils. So then I started using these essential oils. And I got introduced into Reiki. And then I started, you know, did that deep dive into Reiki. Um, and that is my personality. I do a really deep dive until I'm really comfortable with the new process. And right now, um, you know, this is this is over 30 years of learning. I have a library that of books that shows my 30 year progress through everything I did. And when I was taking the Oracle card course, I was pulling Oracle cards every day. And then when the course was over and I sat back and I looked, I thought, oh, I stopped talking to my spirit guides in my meditation because I was going to pull Oracle cards. And it's weird how we stop doing things because we kind of get caught up on something else. So mm -hmm. now it is exactly what you say. Now it depends on what's going on in the day. Do I need to journal today? I only journal if something crappy happens or if something fantastic happens. I, I have the two extremes that go in my journal. Um, I pull I pull a card, normally one card during the week and post it on my Facebook and Instagram. Um, and, and I don't now because I'm having such huge conversations with my spiritual guides and my meditations right now and all of this healing that's going on, I don't need to pull one for myself because I've worked through everything I've, you know, needed to know um, in the meditation. So being able to be fluid in our day. And if we have an off day, why sit there and force yourself to do something because you're going to not do it well? Mm -hmm. And when we force ourselves to do something, it's not done well, and we end up having to redo it. I remember that I made sure that I did at least one post a week on my blog. And then one day I went back and read my blogs. My blogs were messy. <laughs> the sentence structure wasn't right. There was spelling errors in there. I kid you not I spent three hours cleaning up those blogs and I thought never again I'm never gonna just go do a blog because I feel obligated to do it mm -hmm. and but you know that's my personality I can't do things out of obligation I need to do them because I want to do them I'm excited to do them um my energy is high you know and I think we've talked about this before, too, that sometimes our energy is so off and we have a client and we're like, oh, my goodness, I'm really worried because, you know, my energy's off and I don't want my client not to, you know, feel good. And you know what? The client cancels and rebooks a different day. Yes. 
Yes, and, and, and we are so similar in so many of these things because I work the same way as well. When I have a new interest, I want to find out everything about that interest. So I'm doing Googling and, and reading websites and I'm maybe ordering a book. And if it's cards, then I'm very active in, in drawing cards every day and maybe even laying out a spread for myself and then figuring out what it means and, you know, diving into it. And then there comes a moment when... I stop. And that used to bother me because I thought you were having so much fun with it. So why do you stop? And now I've just come to realize that then I've learned what I needed to learn. And then it becomes one of the tools I can access when I feel cold. And as soon as I realized that that is how it works, you do a deep dive, you, you make yourself familiar with something, and then you add it to your arsenal or it's another tool in your toolbox, depending on how you want to describe it. And whenever you need it, you can call on it. You can take it. And, and they, I have those periods when all of a sudden I want to draw cards again. For some reason, I need more guidance or I feel calls to draw. And, and that's just, it's perfect. I also have a vast library of books and I, I'm actually very, very grateful for my e-reader because it holds even more books. <laughs> <laughs> and now my house is not so cluttered anymore. So that's an amazing thing of the e-reader. And it allows it, me to take it with me everywhere. So I can always read. I, I love whenever I have to wait to just continue. And at any given moment, I probably read somewhere between three and five books at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I usually have three going. Right? Yeah. Sometimes I want to read that. But sometimes I also just want to read for fun for yeah. relaxation just some thriller or something you know to to not be busy because uh, i i don't know how it's for you but as an entrepreneur i spend a lot of time educating myself learning new things yes. so i have courses i have books uh, and there are inevitably moments where I feel like I don't want to consume new information at this point. I'm, I've reached my limit. It's, you know, my tank is filled up with the new knowledge. I first need to process it. And in order to process it, I need to do something else, which is either walking in nature, uh, binge watching a series on Netflix. I sometimes <laughs> do that, especially when I've asked too much of myself and I'm also tired. Then I just, I need to do nothing but sit there and, and have something move on the screen <laughs> or I, I so agree no I was just going to say um when you're talking about those fun books uh I you know the movie Practical Magic do you remember that one yes all right so the author I bought a bunch of her books based on that original movie mm -hmm. and I her she's an amazing writer and um, I loved her book. So I did that. I, I, I think it was in the summer. Yeah, just this past summer, I bought like four of her books and read them and absolutely loved them. And, and they're the kind of books that you could, you know, put away for a while and pick up and read again. And, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm with you, you need to, you need to mix and match like I've got um, I'm still struggling on the human design book. <laughs> we talked about that before. I mean, I, I think I've only read maybe three or four more pages since I talked to you last time. Um, but now I'm reading the 72 angels. Mm -hmm. and It's about um, how you can tap into each angel depending on the time of day or night and call in their help. And so now I'm reading about those. I had no idea they're so cool. But um, yeah, no, it's it's fun when we mix and mix and match what we're doing. Yes. You know, and, and I, I, I agree with you. I have the best books are the books that you can read again, that you just put away for a while and that you can read again. And I did it this, this summer. It was my one of my favorite authors. And I have read her books multiple times already. And I decided to start with the first book and then just work my way up. And if I am on a roll, I can read a book in you now three hours or something. And then it's, it's a thick book, you know? Um, but I love reading also for relaxation and what I'm finding lately and I'm, I'm dying to find out if that works for you as well is that even if I read for fun or even if I watch a movie or a series or something online it also gives me inspiration 
it also oh. gives me insights into stuff. Okay. It, sometimes I think then that's why I've been drawn to watch that specific movie or watch that specific episode. Or sometimes I listen to a podcast and I don't do that that often, but I listened to one this weekend and I thought, oh, that's so spot on. That was exactly what I needed to hear today. And it can come from so many unexpected places. So it's, it's not just about... Um, educating yourself and learning and, and reading to learn to grow your knowledge which is also just to use your imagination and that's where the other types of books are good for to to use your imagination to create this fantasy world but also to make connections to things that you were busy working on in your subconsciousness without you probably even being aware of it and then seeing something in the movie and then thinking oh but that's a beautiful lesson I'm so grateful and, and you know you're absolutely right because the spiritual people and we work with our energies um we have things happen like call it a spiritual awakening or something will happen and then we're watching some movie about witches or you know things like that and it's talked about in the movie and it's like oh that's what that was you know we we get um you know I have a friend of mine who was telling me that every time she closes her eyes she sees this white light in the middle of her in the middle of her skull and i'm like yeah it's okay your your chakra is open you're connected to the universe this is all good but you know if you don't have somebody to talk to about that stuff if you're feeling all of these different things in your physical body and you really don't get what's going on i don't know about you but have you ever thought about doing something and then you go to do it and it's already done i don't i need to think about that a bit longer i do have that i think i need to do something and i go there and and then i think what was i was supposed to do and then I see something else and then I go do that. And then that leads me to something else. And then eventually I thought, oh, that was the thing I was going to go do there. And, and I get back to it. Well, not so much for me. Um, I'm going to call it a little bit about a magic. We, you know how people can move things with their mind. They can move things across the table. They can do things like that. We all have the capability to do that. And we all have the, the ability to move energy and do things. Well, every once in a while, whatever I'm doing is, is or thinking or whatever, um, it's like you kind of get into, um, you're not really there, like that, that kind of that meditative state when you're not really there, you're thinking about it, you're not really there, you envision yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. and and then I'll go later and say oh, I was going to do that and it's done and I know I haven't moved I know I didn't get up and go do that but it was done um I have had the ability to bend time I have left the house really late and I need to be where I need on time and there's no logical way that I can get there on time none whatsoever but because I set my intention I send that energy ahead I still show up on time Mm -hmm. but if you That's took the, you know, it's like but it's almost impossible to do but i've done it so this is that, this that is, happened. yeah this is what i mean we have the capability of of doing that like there's you see people who can levitate mm -hmm. right you see those gurus in india and they're doing all of this and the monk is levitating we all have these beautiful magical capabilities because we're all energy and if we learn to tap into our energy we can actually do these things yeah. but I love it when my I'm going to say my maybe my soul energy is so strong that it goes ahead and does it energetically you know and and those and so I love it when things it's kind of like things like that happen in a movie and you go oh okay I get it now I understand how i was able to do that yes because yes. they're talking about energy and they explain energy and they say you know actually decide to do something and as human beings we're very magical we think that we can create it yes yes that is very true and i think as, as children we naturally tap into these abilities mm -hmm. but somewhere along the line we unlearn how to do it 
because it doesn't fit into society's expectations. It's not a required course in school. Um, and even the other side, that's what happened to me whenever I showed my abilities, people didn't like it. Adults didn't like it. Adults got scared because I knew things that I had no way of knowing, but they were spot on and it scares them. And mm -hmm. those responses, they also make you feel like it's not okay that I can do these things. And, and, and it's, it's not even that by itself. It's also that there's absolutely no focus on these abilities. And there's so much focus on the mind, on learning facts, learning algebra, with, uh, mathematics, uh, history, um, you know, languages, so much factual knowledge is, is what we learn in school. And when no attention is given to practicing with our more magical abilities to, to call them that, then we just, we tend to forget when you don't see people around you doing it, when no attention has been given to it and you've been made to feel like it's not okay if you use them. I think that's the way we lose them or lose touch with them because I don't think we actually completely lose them. We just forget how to access them. Exactly. We do forget how to access them. Um, I, I know that I, I had a memory come up one time where as a little girl, I, could, I saw people, but not as people, I saw their colors. Mm -hmm. So I know at a very young age, I identified people by their auras. But again, you tell people, oh, that person looks pink or that person looks blue. You know, your parents are going to get really upset about that. And I grew up knowing that I wasn't allowed to express myself. I wasn't allowed to talk. I learned at a very young age, I quit talking. I quit you know, and I um, was very a blunt person, you know, if you were fat, I'd say, why are you fat? Or, you know, I'd say, you know, would you just please go brush your teeth? You know, you smell like bacon. <laughs> you know, I was one of those kids. And of course, nobody wanted to be around you. Because I was just if I said anything, I was very blunt, because I was not allowed to talk at home. Mm -hmm. We never had conversations. There was never a conversation at the supper table. When I was younger, my dad was never home. He was, you know, he was driving truck or in construction. He wasn't around. Um, and, and my mother was one of those parents and that's the way it was back then. They fed you, they pushed you out the door. Mm -hmm. you came back in, you had lunch, you were pushed out the door. You came in, you had supper, you had a bath, you went to bed. There was no adult conversation with me growing up. I never learned how to have a conversation. I never learned how to speak. <laughs> and it took a long time for me to um, gain those skills as a young adult. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I think that that's definitely a huge part in it. But the other yeah. part is also the person that we are. Mm -hmm. the being more sensitive, highly sensitive, intuitive, empathic, we don't like to beat around the bush. No. We like to say it, as it is and not sugarcoat it mm -hmm. we are very honest very direct that also makes us blunt and yeah. we love having deep conversations about topics that actually mean something so idle chit chat or coffee talks yeah. even if we had learned it it would still not be our thing no <laughs> Uh, I have a hard time I just I I, I became an observer because I seems so meaningless to me and I never like to play those games like uh, if I like somebody I'd go up and say hi my name is Robin you know you want to hang out and I never understood those games um that one day you're somebody's friend and the next day you're not and I was like okay I just give up I spent my I spent most of my time in my room with a good book I when I was very young I was reading at a, a very high level because that was that was the safest place for me to be was in my bedroom reading a book and then nobody's criticizing me nobody's telling me i can't talk nobody's, nobody's mm -hmm. being mean to me <laughs> no and it's a great way to escape because reading books it opens up a whole new world and it taps into your imagination and and it's a way also of fleeing reality if you're in and that's also why i loved to read it's um submerging yourself into a wondrous world where everything's possible 
and mm -hmm. that's part of, of what I liked in, about reading and, and I understand what you're saying I was picked on and bullied a lot in school there were not a lot of people who wanted to hang out with me and even if they did then it still was kind of awkward because I, I, I didn't really know how to connect no no I I didn't either I um yeah it, it's and I think in in reality if you think about what we do now that was actually a gift that was the way we needed to grow up we needed to learn to internalize we needed to learn our imagination so that when we stepped in our full spirituality when we became healers and teachers it was nothing new for us to go within go into the heart chakra get the information we need from spirit it wasn't a huge leap into accepting our uh, spiritual awakenings mm -hmm. you know it it was easier for us to to step into that because we had already spent so much time um in a book and in our imagination and learning how to cope in a world that didn't understand us and was uncomfortable with us yes yes and i see that with a lot of call us highly sensitive people, light workers, empaths, yeah, it, it, there is overlap. Um, but the more energy sensitive beings among us, we have that more, I think, than the other 80% of the world. And it's so important to talk about these subjects because there are so many people that feel that there's something wrong with them because of this, because they are different from other people and they've been made to feel like that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. and, and it really isn't. I, I mean, I, I never understood, um, like you said, I was just really blunt. I didn't know how to say things in a in a polite way or to stop and think about what I was going to say. And I ended up taking a course when I was in my 30s to um, because I was a reactive person because of the way I was raised and to learn to quit being a reactive person because that's, you know, a learned behavior. And I didn't know I could change it. I had somebody tell me the other day well that's just who I am and and I'm not going to change and I'm like well that's fine but it's not working for you <laughs> it's fine when it's not working for you but because we, we have that's who we are and it becomes automatic and it's learned behavior yes. we have to be brought the awareness that we can change it and the course I took um it it identified each one of us there was a whole group of us there but it identified each one of us as to our personalities and then gave us the tools on how to change from being a reactive person to listening thinking asking yourself questions before you open your mouth mm -hmm. and that was incredibly powerful for me to learn because that's when I started learning better communication skills it's in my 30s yes you know but mm -hmm. You know, and now I'm 62. It's okay. I think I'm <laughs> now with my communication skills. Um, but, and I love it because it taught me that when, instead of reacting, when something happens and I don't know how to process it, I just shut up now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just don't say anything at all. And I stop and I think about it. And then I, you know, go through it emotionally and then I decide if I'm going to bother to respond or not. And, and by that, and because of that, there isn't any huge fights or arguments. I'm not making somebody feel stupid because I'm reacting right away to how they feel. But it gives me the opportunity to really think about, do I want to respond? Will it make any difference if I respond? Is the, is the situation still going to be exactly the same, whether I respond or not? And is it helpful? Yes. And that's and the biggest thing. Is it helpful? And that's one of the things that most people don't realize. They immediately respond. It's their autopilot program that immediately fires off whenever a threat is perceived or whenever something happens. And, and we have multiple autopilot programs for multiple different situations. And what happens most of the time is that it just fires off and you react in that way that you've always reacted to those types of things. But we, in fact, have a choice 
we can choose how we respond, we can choose what we think, and we can choose if we even want to respond, if we only take the moment to pause, something happens, and instead of automatically going into whatever response that you've programmed yourself with, that probably worked when you programmed it, but um, might not be working, and I'm saying it very politely, might not be working at this moment, but you have the choice to think, and, and we had this wonderful session about it last week. Am I going to be the judging kind? Am I going to come from a place of hurt and judgment and, and um, negativity and, and, and hitting back, hurting back, you know, those types of responses? Or am I responding from a place of nobody wants me, nobody needs me, uh, feeling sorry for myself, not believing in myself, uh, that, that could be a response. Or am I trying to stay in neutral, which would be better than the first two, and thinking, well, you don't have to respond right now. Just, you know, take your time, just mull it over, and, and, and uh, that could be your response. It could also be, and that's when you train yourself more and work more with uh, the type of work that we are doing, and then you can train yourself into thinking, okay, but what is the higher goal here? Mm -hmm. Is it really worth getting into a fight over this? And will it still be worth it in an hour, in a day, in a week? You know, I can just let you have this win if that is so important to you, because honestly, it's not important to me. So, you know, uh, and that could be your response or your response could be thinking, what do you really need? What's going on with you underneath all of this that you're projecting towards me? And how can I assist you into moving into a better response in the future? And obviously, this is not a response that you will do with everybody. You know, if, if the girl behind the cash register at the supermarket is being sh short with me, I'm, I'm not going to use this response. I'm going to do the one that I think, well, you know, how important is it? smile back and just move on. But when it comes to people that are important in my life, that I value, that I love, um, or clients um, that I value, that I love, and that need to change, want to change, then that could be a really great response, you know, seeing what is going on and can I help you in any way? Is the energy also such that I can help you at this moment. It's not just your intention of wanting to help, but is the other also open to receiving your help? Because otherwise it also will not work. So it's very interesting that you can choose your responses and you can choose your thoughts and you can choose your emotions and you can choose your actions. And that was mind-blowingly. Yeah. And I mean, being raised in a household where we never had a conversation like if dad said jump you asked how high and you asked permission to come back down um it didn't teach me those skills it didn't teach me the thinking i was in fight or flight mode all the time like you just you know you just needed to know that you know when when dad lost it you, you better be somewhere else um so and and then i just learned you know, because of, of my childhood, um, I just learned that if somebody had a negative response to me, I just avoided them. I never tried to find out why. I never asked the question. It was like, I just learned very early that if somebody was responding to you in a negative way, you just walk away, you know? So I didn't know how to fight because I never learned to fight. I always walked away from the fight. Me too. Um, in my relationships, I... You know, I tried to use logic or, you know, but I didn't know it was okay to have a fight with a person yes. and make up. I could not fight. I couldn't fight back. I didn't know how. And, mm. you know, when I had had enough of, um, of that kind of relationship, I would just walk away. You know, it's okay. I'm done. If you can't be nice to me, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. And, and I never, the first time I saw my parents fight in front of us kids was when I was 27 years old. Wow. 
So you can imagine that my parents never fought in front of us either. It was just, you do what I say, you do it now or else. But there was no fighting. No, I, I recognize it. it. We were raised with everything should be peaceful. So everything you do should be directed towards keeping the peace. And that means swallowing your pride, swallowing your counter words, because that would create an argument and an argument is not peace. Right. So everything was directed towards keeping the peace. Um, my parents would definitely not fight in front of us, but they would fight when we went to bed and we had such thin walls and ceilings that it woke me up multiple times, my parents fighting. So I didn't know that fighting was there. I just didn't know how that worked. And that's why I took all the bullying and all the beating in school and, and only my response, I think it was crying and that made them bully me even more because that was the desired response apparently. And I was obliging them because I didn't know how to handle it differently. I think I was almost 12. The first time I pushed someone away from me that was hurting me physically, that was hitting me. And it was more because I had finally reached the point where enough was enough. And I just, I, just, I shoved them and they fell backwards into a puddle in the winter. And, and that made their ass completely wet, which is no fun when it's cold and freezing outside. And after that, they had some sort of fearful respect for me. And I thought, oh, I like this. Not the physical shoving part, but the, the having respect and, and not bullying me part. That was what I liked. And I had never learned that. Yeah, I, I actually did. It was so interesting because um, I was in grade seven and this guy decided he was going to beat me up. And I'm like, I mean, I'm in grade seven. Who, what boy beats up a girl in grade seven? But an older boy in grade nine come up and he said to him, he says, you better not touch her again. You know, he says, she knows. Um, I think, it was, what was it? It was, he either said karate or taekwondo or something like that. And she can beat the crap out of you, but she's not allowed because she's taught not to do that. Yes. That rumor followed me all through junior high. And then I learned to use that bravado because that guy taught me to act like I could kick the shit out of you. And you're just lucky I ain't going to do it. That when I started working in the bars, when I was in my 20s as a barmaid and a bartender, I used that bravado against obnoxious drunk people. And it worked. So there was a part of me that learned to use that bravado. Um, so I never... I never really had anybody physically hurt me, like hit me or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it was because somebody stepped in and showed me how to pretend that I could mm -hmm. kick ass. Yeah, and that's so incredibly valuable because most of the yeah. time that's enough. I learned on a much later age that it usually is bravado from their side as well. People threatening to bully you, threatening to hit you, threatening to do all kinds of things. Usually it's also bravado. Yeah. And if you can either see through it and give them love or be um, even more bravado back. Mm -hmm. then yeah. That yeah, that's that mirroring thing. You know, I remember, you know, taking a course on mirroring and I thought, oh, you know, I learned how to do that quite a while ago. But it's that body language, copying the person's body language, mirroring back what they're giving to you. And it does help in certain situations. There's other situations where, you know, you don't use it. But, you know, sometimes that mirroring or that energy or just kind of standing up really does help. Um, and it's interesting how we both come from similar backgrounds, but we all had to learn coping mechanisms. Yes to get us where we are. And, you know, I would love to end this interview with, you know, that now 
we have this huge amount of skills and we don't have to do the bravado anymore. We don't have to do the mirroring anymore as often because we, we know how to tap into that energetic energy. And if we change the energy around us, it calms the situation. It calms the person. Um, it, it, it is so much more powerful um, just to use our energetic field. And yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Yes. Yes, I agree. It, it, they say with age comes wisdom, but it's true. <laughs> so I have a lot of wisdom to look forward to before I am your age, but I do, <laughs> I do see that when I look back, I, I, I remember when I was 18, I thought the world of myself. I thought I knew everything and I thought I was ready to face the world. And if I now look back at myself at that age, I thought your mom was right. You don't know anything. You're just looking around the corner for the first time and you have absolutely no clue what's waiting for you around that corner, but you go ahead and, and be convinced that you know everything and that you can handle everything. It's, it's funny how that works. Uh, well, and you know, I think it's a survival mode. I think that that kicks in at that age because we're really walking out into the world for the first time and we have to convince ourselves that we know everything so that we'll actually do it. And um, I think it's a necessary skill that that little bit of ego, we need that ego to get out there and start because ego is all about surviving. And, yeah. you know, between the ages of like when we walk out of our parents' home, mine, I was 16, but you know, that ego goes into survival mode and protects us and keeps us safe. And eventually we do, you know, when we get older and we get more mature, we learn how to balance that ego with common sense and kindness and yeah. wisdom. But yeah, without that ego, I don't think any of us would have survived when we walked out that door. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I don't think we would have even tried walking out the door. Yeah. We would have stayed safe in our room with our book and be happy there. You know? <laughs> Uh, well, this uh, was, was fun, Barbara. Thank you so much. Yes, it was definitely fun. Thank you for a very, very cool, good conversation again, Robin. And I look forward to the next time that we meet. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a great day. You too. <laughs>